was really looking forward to driving the car again, and especially with all the improvements that we made, especially reliability. The car is really, really fun to drive. It's got launch control, and it's like you're just shot out of a cannon when you're doing a speed stop or when you're uh, launching for an autocross. You know, I really wish I would have got into this series three or four or five years ago because it has gotten so fierce that you've had to just come out and just do 100% right off the bat. There was no surveying the competition. There was no, oh, let's see what happens next year. It's getting so fierce that you just got to come out and you got to give 100%. And yes, my mind's definitely on Vegas. I want nothing more than to have this car on the podium. To know that I'm more like that redneck, Hick, small town guy, you know, have my own little garage. I built everything in my own garage. The, heart, the car was put together by myself. And to come out here and play against big horsepower, it just feels good to, to, to be able to be at that level. This is a little car. It, it has to weigh 3,060 pounds to be legal. We're competing against Corvettes that weigh about the same. Uh, Ken makes you know, 150 less, or actually not even that, about 50 less at the tire, but the car, his car and our, and our car weighs about the same, so it comes down to setup and driver at that point. I have what I have, I brought what I brought, and I'm trying to do my best with what I have. The speed stop is the same as it was last year. You take off on the oval, so it's kind of banked, and then you get to the end of the road, you brake hard, come off the bank and it slams down onto the pit road and you come back the other way and go through a little slalom into the box. Speed stop's really, really tough on your junk. You make that kind of horsepower, you've got sticky tires, you're at 95 degrees, the track's hot, you know, you're, you're really beating the car pretty good when you go to do a speed stop. The, the hardest part about the speed stop definitely was the turn and the off camber. Uh, not being on a speedway as much as, uh, as many times I guess I could say as other people uh, didn't give me that experience that I've, uh, I don't know, I guess had in my pocket. The cool factor about the speed stop here is that you got a long straightaway and you, I get to use the launch control on the Evo. And what that means is, is that you literally can plant your foot on the floor with the accelerator it revs up to a point and bounces off of a rev limiter and it holds it at 6,000 RPM and you dump the clutch. And it shoots off the line like a shot out of a cannon. I was hoping for a good day with no problems and you know what, that's what we got. We literally put fuel in the car all day, kicked back and, it, and started tuning on the suspension. First lap around, Bang, you know, we were like leading right from the get-go. We got a, a lot of room to, to play with here to try and whittle it down. Hopefully we'll get a 15-9, something like that. And that should put us real solid in this competition. Cool, you know, this car is gonna be fast here. like you went wide and turned in right at the cone, which is good so you weren't overshooting it. Yeah, I was trying to stay on the flat part. I don't want to accelerate uphill. Okay. So I was trying to get as much as I could and then I just kept, kept it tight. Okay. Bang, bang, you know, bang two, yeah, cause I'm up to third. And I'm stopping just perfect. It's just a foot away from the end cone. Yeah. The ABS works great. You're able to take it in as deep as possible, stand on the brake pedal hard and let the computer do the work on the ABS. 15.5, baby. You get out to a speed stop, you've got an all-wheel drive car, you've got launch control, you've got you know traction control, you've got sequential tranny and all that. It, it takes that gap of the horsepower and it really narrows it. It makes it a lot closer than you would think. So we were hoping that that time was gonna stand, and it did, except for Rich's Corvette, and he beat us by a couple tenths of a second. Luckily, our car works pretty well. Um, obviously, there is some driver involvement, um, but it's cool to see high horsepower cars set up really well that can come out here and compete. 16-2-1. In comparison to the high horsepower cars, I was, I was right there with them. Uh, the track, once it got 
taught, uh, it was really hard to keep up with my times throughout the, the session. It is hot. The car was running hot, so I was having to take some freeway runs to cool it back down to its normal running temperature. And so, uh, aside from that, um, you know, I was happy with the times and it, it put me in a good position. I was pretty relaxed and calm. It's pretty cool when you know that um, you've got one of the fastest car at the track. Overall, I mean, I know that the car is good, it feels good, it's performing good. I could feel the power difference that it wasn't quite as crisp as it normally was, but hey, we were still out, out front. Yeah, one of the good things about uh, here at Pikes Peak is the autocross course is really, really fun. When I walked it, I was sitting there going, oh man, you know, after coming out of the last event I ran in Vegas, I was getting like 94 miles an hour across the, the finish line. I'm going, oh man, not another small one like Thunder Hill. The first lap I did, I went, oh, this is really deceiving. This is way faster than I thought. It's technical. That back sweeper had a lot of uh, time you could make up back there. And I think that's where a lot of my time was made up. I just kept pushing it harder and harder and harder through that back sweeper. And it was a really, really fun course. I went and told Jimmy, I said, hey, looks for deceiving. Because I looked at it and walked it this morning and went, this is going to suck. And then we went out and drove and went, this is a really fun course. Yeah, Rich Willoff in his Corvette has really stepped his game up this year. Uh, he, he wasn't really known as an autocrosser. He's a road racer like me. And it's taken me a couple years of practicing on autocross to, to really pick up the skills that it takes. It's a different philosophy. And I've improved in autocross, and you know what? Rich has too. And he's got all the tools that it takes to run the table in Vegas. The car was set up really well. I honestly only made one click uh, softer on the front shocks all day, and I dropped a couple of tire, or a couple of pounds on tire pressure here and there. That was it. The rest was pushing the car harder and harder and harder and finding that limit. And we know that Rich has set a time of 39.4, uh, which is pretty fast and significantly faster than everybody else. On my first run, you're still learning the track and learning what the car could do, but you ought to be within two seconds of, of what the fast time should be if you want to be competitive. Our first lap, we're four seconds off the pace right away, and I didn't screw up that bad. I mean, the, the time was there. I think we got to raise the back back up a little bit. Okay. Let's do that two turns. Yeah. yeah. I knew we were off the pace, um, but we have two and a half hours to work on the car and make it better. And we have data acquisition that we're getting from each run that we make on the autocross track, and we can overlay it on the computer and see where I'm slower, see where I'm faster. I'll accept the technology, that's for sure. What was really strange was, you know, we kind of blew that run in the first few corners. It was kind of just cruising, you know, well, okay, let's keep going and see, you know, how the car feels, that kind of thing. And we caught back up to our fast time, just like that. Eight tenths down right here, and then you pull it back, six tenths, six tenths down. So you pull two tenths back, on whatever line you did wow. right through here. I was just cruising. I wasn't even serious. Yeah, and it was, it was crazy. It was faster. Wow. Computer's telling me what I was doing right, what I was doing wrong, and now if I do it right in all the places, you know, I'll gain a half a second, something like that. But the black one, is it too tight inside there? And I think it you went a little too deep right through here. Ah. So you see how it's, it's offline, and the other ones just catch right up and pass them. So just maybe go a little bit slower through this section here, deliberately, so you can turn in a little before that slalom cone. When somebody tells you you're 10 miles an hour faster on this run, and here's the proof from the computer, I stop and listen and go, you know what? That is, I know I can make up time there. As a driver, you always want to do better. The car, you always want it to be faster, more horsepower. It's always more, 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 more. He's chipping away at getting closer and closer. And I think as he gets his setup down, uh, he's going to be more competitive as well. And like I said, I mean, this is a six, seven year deal with our car. And this is really the first year going into this that I haven't touched the car all season other than making, you know, shock adjustments and tire pressure changes and stuff like that. We took big chunks off. Uh, at a time as we improved the car, but I knew that it was going to be a tall order to get down in the 39s with the Evo. We just didn't have, uh, we just didn't have what it took to get there. So you know, it was pretty impressive to see what he did. And I saw him run his 39.4, and he had a passenger in the car. So you know, he 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 had us covered on Saturday. 
Uh, he'll probably have us covered here on the road course on Sunday, but you know what? We're going down fighting and swinging. We just spent a whole freaking three weeks building this car and making it better in design, so if that comes through for us, that would be great. Yeah,